everybody, Jessie here from jessiebanks.com and I'm back with another video. So for today's video, it's Wednesday and I'm going to jump on the ever-living bandwagon of everybody doing watercolor on Wednesdays because they both start with W and I'm, I just think it sounds neat so I figured instead of being like, it's watercolor on Thursdays because I want to be different, let's just jump on the bandwagon and do watercolor on Wednesdays with everybody else. So I'm hoping to make this a weekly series here on my channel and um, that you guys will enjoy it. But for today, um, being it's kind of the first one, I am going to do an introduction to my watercolors. Please don't judge me, you guys. I'm, I'm, I have a ton of watercolors. I love them. I collect them. It's taken me years. I will continue to collect them and buy more. So I'm just going to run through everything I have that is watercolor and... Um, I'm hoping that showing them all to you now will hold me accountable to use them all in different videos so you guys can see the way they all are slightly different, the way they all react, the difference in the qualities and things of that nature. You um, do not need to have all of the paints that I have. No person in their right mind needs to have all of the paints that I have, but we're going to um, run through everything I have and then I'm going to talk a little bit about paper and a little bit about um, the... Um, brushes I use and a couple extra things and all of that jazz. So let's get into this one because it's probably going to be a little bit longer than my usual videos. So um, the first watercolor set I have here is this one. It's got, I don't know, I think it's just because they're chalky watercolors. They aren't growing or anything because I leave them open to make sure they dry. I always take, I don't put anything on that seals really solid because um, uh, water can cause mildew on your paints and things. That's just from sitting in the drawer. So these I bought at Michael's. They are the Artist Loft. They're made by Daler and Rowney. They say Daler Rowney on the back. I don't know if you can see that. But they are just um, really, really inexpensive watercolors. I think that's like five or six dollars. This is Canadian pricing. I live in Canada. Um, you get a wide range of colors from browns and blacks all the way up to your pinks and your whites. Um, they are very chalky. They do make beautiful paintings and you can make fantastic cards with them. And I will use them on a card in the future. I have used them before. You can tell by how dirty the palette is that they do get used. Um, I just don't film with watercolors a lot and I really need to get into that. And that's why I'm going to start doing this on Wednesdays. So this, I have this set of watercolors to use in the future. Next up is a praying set of watercolors. Now this is, um, an ancient palette. I have, <laughs> I need to clean this palette. I have had this palette since middle school, I do believe, actually. Do you believe I took it from the school? Don't steal. But I do believe I took it from school. Um, in my 30s, I took this like forever ago. Um, and I still use them from time to time. So, um, I really like this palette. It gives you a lot more versatility and you get a few extra colors compared to your normal where you could just get the one section. Um, the really cool thing is as you use these, they are replaceable, which is awesome about praying. Um, you can just buy like a new oval palette and it is called blue green so you know which one to order. So, it's super cool that they have it that way. Um, you get a nice range of colors in here. Um, I know that I've mixed them up. Like, I have a green one here. And these should be swapped because this is yellow and this is green. And that was probably just me being a 12-year-old or whatever and moving stuff around. So, and like, this is the turquoise blue. And this is the blue. So... They need to kind of get put back where they belong. Like, this is supposed to be brown and this is supposed to be violet. So, I kind of need to move them around and put things back where they belong. And I will do that before I foam with it. But, it's a great set. Um, for the price of these watercolors, you can't beat it. They are creamy. They are not chalky. They are wonderful to learn with. So, I'm definitely going to clean this palette up and use this in a future video. Krang makes fantastic, like, really inexpensive watercolors. I will never call them cheap. Um, this palette folds too. Oh, it pops apart. Hmm. Didn't know that. Learn something new every day, you guys. <laughs> so, but anyway, <laughs> random thought. Now I gotta figure out how to put it back together. I think I broke it. I broke it. That's all right. That's all right. We will be using this in the future. It's a million years old, and the clip broke off inside here on both sides because I twisted it and didn't realize that you anyway we will be using this in the future this is a great watercolor set praying is fantastic for entry-level watercolors um I have this set here from Koi from Sakura Koi this is I think it's the 24 pan 
palette. 6, 6, 12, 18, 24. Um, it does come with water brush. It's in my brush thing. I have swatched them out. I did use them just a little bit. I have only had this palette for a couple of weeks. Um, maybe a month. I picked it up um, on Boxing Day. So it's been a month and I haven't really used it, but I picked it up on Boxing Day with 60% off or 50% off. I think it was 60% off coupon at Michael's. So I grabbed that one. I figured lots of people like to use it in their videos. I should give it a shot and see what I think about it. So I have no opinions yet. <laughs> um, next up I have a bag here of skin grade watercolors and washes. Um, I bought these forever and a year ago. Um, some of them I have used like almost gone. The gouaches I've barely touched. Um, but these are all Daler and Rowney watercolors and gouaches. Nope, Royal Langneckle gouaches, pardon me. So, but like I said, some of these have been used to death. Um, some of them have been barely touched. So I'm hoping to use these a little bit more. These ones you can pick up at Walmart. Again, a decent entry line paint. I know lots of people say they smell. I don't know, maybe I have a weak nose. I haven't smelled these. Oh, I hope they don't stink. No, they don't smell bad at all. They have no scent. All right. I read that the other or this morning, so that's why I was. Anyway, so I have those to use up. That is in a hip kit club bag from when I used to scrapbook all the time. Uh, next up, I have these ones. This is a Winsor and Newton Cotman set. I've used these a ton. This pan I took out. It's in another palette. I'll show you guys later. It was the white, and I don't normally paint with watercolor white, so I gutted it and put some white wash into it in a different palette so so that is this one it does slide out so you have tons of mixing space on it I have used it a ton my son uses it a lot so I have that one to use then I have this set I don't have the large one let me zoom this out just a hair I don't have the large set it's cracked lots hm. I have not um, I keep my craft room is in my basement, but I do keep it fairly dry down here simply because of all the papers, so that could be due to part of the cracking. I've barely touched these. I've had them forever, and they are in the drawer, and I forget about them. Again, that is why I want to start doing this so that I start using this stuff. So I have no opinion on these, and I wish I did. I wish I used them enough to have an opinion. Um, I know that the pans are big, but they are not super deep, and they are not filled super deep. Let's pop one out here, so... And your pan's about that thick and it is filled to about half just over half so but you still get a ton of paint in there so again I have swatched them does that count so we will be using these in the future as well I hope hence like I said keep me accountable that's why we're doing this um, then I have I recently did a video with these these are the Jane Davenport watercolors um, they are manufactured through American crafts so this is the Glitzy palette. It doesn't look like I've used much of it, used them at all, but I have played with them a couple times. And there is that one video. So there it is with its swatches. And then this is the Brights palette. So there it is with its swatches. And then when I was in the city the other day, I picked, they finally had it in stock. This is her Neutrals palette. So this one's gold. Um, I haven't even swatched this one yet. I just unwrapped it this morning. I just picked it up on Sunday. It is Tuesday when I'm filming this. So I want to get to use this. This is because of Carissa. And she uses it for a lot of her skin colors when she's painting for her cards. This one doesn't stand up as much. Like the other ones stay way straight. But this one's kind of flimsy. I don't know. It's all good. I'll use it. So we have to swatch these and get to use those. So that is these palettes. This is the... If you have this tin, I know it shows up a lot bluer on camera by the looks of it. But this is the exact same, like it matches my kitchen and dining room color, random thought. So I have those. Let's move these over so we can carry on. <laughs> That's something I want to admit to. I have the entire line of Brusho watercolor powders. Um, I think there's like 32 or 36 of them. I have swatched them all. There's a whole drawer full. I didn't pull them all out, but... I have all of these that we need to play with and use on some cards. The black is amazing. I've used that one lots, but I need to play with them all. I have them. We need to use them, Jesse. I have a whole ton of Twinkling H2Os. I store them like this. They get stored in a drawer with, so they've got all the colors on the back. 
Um, I have a whole bunch of them, like a whole pile. This one's going to fall out. Um, I love these. They're super shimmery. Tons of fun. I keep them without the lids on because I had one mold on me when I put the lid on it again. That's that whole sealing water in can create mildew, which will grow. So we'll use those again. I used to use them a ton and I've forgotten about them lately. I did a review on these paints recently. Um, uh, if I can figure out how to put the little eye up, if not, it will be in the description box below. Uh, this is the Stone Ground Paint Company. So these are handmade watercolors. They are made in Regina, Saskatchewan, which is fairly local to me. So I have this little palette here. I haven't. This is um, ultramarine blue. I haven't swatched it. Um, the dioxazine purple is the most beautiful purple ever. But I have a review on these on my channel. So we need to use these in some cards coming up. Um, when I was in there and picked up the Napfall Red and the Ultramarine Blue so that I had a set of, um, a set of primaries for those. They had some of the St. Petersburg, St. Petersburg White Knights and they were clearancing them out. So I picked up some of those to try because people have loved them. I haven't even opened them yet, so, <laughs> again, yeah, I know. Uh, I did a video recently with Inktense pencils and realized that I have a set of the 24 Inktense blocks. Now I know these are not necessarily a watercolor, but they are a water-based medium and I do, when I did use this, apparently I've used it a few times, I did use it like a palette, so I'm hoping to get some more use out of this set of blocks. So I pulled that out to put in the pile. I have Peerless watercolors here. So this is just swatches of them all, but... I have the original book, and what I did was I cut a section of them off of the original colors. Um, these are, they come on a piece of paper, and it's really, really pigmented paint on there. And I created a palette for them, so this is the original plus the bonus packs. Um, let's see here. I'll do it this way. Um, see, I was a scrapbooker. I used um, thickers that have faded the color completely off of them over the years that they've been glued to this. So, but I have a palette here, it runs on both sides, and I just have all of the colors. I did put a transparency sheet in between so that I can close it when it's wet and they won't stick together. I had missed a couple, so I used a transparent card for um, Project Life and put that in so that there is a barrier again if they go in wet, if I close it wet. So I have all of those in that little book. These are super bright and vivid, I love them. Then I have, this is my, this is my Schmincke palette. I love these paints. I wanted these paints for years and saved up and saved up and saved up. And then I contemplated for like two weeks once I had the money for them. And then the other half told me to buy them. I know you can't really see what has divots and what doesn't, but I do use these paints lots. I absolutely adore them. I have the entire, I made myself a swatch chart here to carry inside of it. Um, this is where that half pan went from, from the Cotman set, and that is just Windsor Newton white wash in there. So that is this set of paints. And then I do have, this is from Schmincke. They had um, new colors come out in 2017. I do want to order a few of them, but this is the dot chart. I emailed them inquiring about it when they first launched so they were kind enough to send me this swatch chart I have a do I do have an entire video of all of these and there's little check marks besides some of the ones I want to order to use um their brilliant opera rose is supposed to be more light fast than most so I really want to grab that one especially for floral paintings so I have that um I have a Daniel Smith dot chart here I got this when I had ordered a few more tubes, so this is the Andy Evans Evanson palette. So I haven't even blended them all out, but I do have a lot of these um, in tubes in the Daniel Smith paints. But these are really cool to get. And when you order, I ordered these from the Mary the Mary artist. And if you spend so much money on Daniel Smith paints, you can usually get one of these for free that they send you. So that's super awesome. Um, I have, like I said, I have a lot of the colors, but you can try a few like the. Um, Pyrenone orange I've never used, transparent yellow oxide, um, germish greenish raw umber I've never used, so it's really cool to be able to try a couple colors I haven't used and see if I do want to grab the entire tube of them. I do have this palette, um, so this is a Magello palette. It is a mess. It is not big enough. I need to buy another one like my Schmincke palette and put in 
so that I can put these in. But in this palette, there's all sorts of things. Like, there's little daubs of color all over you can see, so that's just because I ran out of wells. But I have, um, Cotman tubes, I have Core tubes, I have, um... M. Graham, Daniel Smith, so it's just kind of like a mismatch of everything. I pretty much know what is where, and I use it all the time, but I would like to get a better palette so that I can have mixing area as well, and I don't need to carry a plate around with me. But I do, I do really love this palette. I would like to get the one with the 33 wells in it, maybe two of them, and use that. Or get like a large metal palette with a half pan so I can put 48 or more in there. And then finally, we're on to my tubes. So I have a whole ton of Daniel Smith tubes. That's not A whole bunch of different colors. I don't even know how many I have. I've bought a lot of the 15 milliliters and then some of the fives. So I do have a ton of these. Um, I have quinacridone gold. Now, um, anybody who's really big into watercolor knows that they've just... Um, Daniel Smith had the last of the original pigment for quinacridone gold, which was PY49. Um, they have ran out of it after being like 17 years of the only company to be able to have it in a single pigment form and have switched to a dual pigment form. So I bought three tubes. Well, two more. I have one that I had started using because I had emptied one and I had just barely started when they announced it. So I grabbed two more because I really do love that color and I use it all the time. But that's just kind of a, uh, a side note here. Um, I do have two tubes of um, M. Graham Titanium White. This is gouache. I like this for doing highlights on eyes, adding white spots and things. I even use it over top of my Copic markers and colored pencils and stuff just because it is opaque. So I really enjoy that. I have a bunch of core watercolors. Um, I had bought a s couple of sets or one set of the little ones that come in the trial size. I think it was one set, the set of 12. And then I have picked up since just one or two tubes of um, the full size. So I really enjoy these. I think they're beautiful paints. They paint lovely. They flow great. I have, what, two tubes of M. Graham watercolors. Now these are honey-based, um, where the rest are gum arabic. So I have it. I have yellow ochre and quinacridone rose. Um, the art store I picked these up from didn't carry Daniel Smith. And I, need, I wanted a quinacridone rose at that time. So I have those. This is a Holbein watercolor. I think that's the only one I have. Oh, nope, there should be one more. There should be a purple in here. I'm pretty good at remembering what I buy. I just can't find the tube. There it is. So I have mineral violet and turquoise blue. Yeah, these are Holbein watercolors. They're fantastic. I love them. Um, I have one artist grade. Windsor & Newton, this is Potter's Pink. Potter's Pink is a beautiful color, but it's really, really hard to re-wet in any line. Um, and then I have a couple of cork or Cotman colors that I had picked up way, way back. I've had these for years and years and years and years, and I really don't use them anymore now that I've gotten into the artist grade ones, but I have a cerulean blue, a sap green, and a mauve. So that is, that is everything I have for water. Oh, I have, <laughs> this is a Mission Gold watercolor. It's peacock blue. It came with the watercolor palette. It's a beautiful color, but it came with the palette, so that's why I have that one. So that is everything I have in artist grade watercolors. I kind of went through them from most inexpensive end to the more expensive end. Um, and I love them all, and I, I use them all. I really do. I just need to use them more, and I need to get better at the couple that I've recently purchased that I haven't used. So I'm hoping that, like I said, this Wednesday thing will help with that. <coughs> and now on to paper. Let's talk paper. I have tons of paper. Okay. Um, this is a Daler and Rowney watercolor paper pad. Uh, I got this at Walmart. It's not great. It's super thin and flimsy. Um, I would use it for sketching. I really haven't touched it since I have picked up some more um, expensive watercolors. Two, three. There's six pages left. There was 15 in the pad. This is 90 pound paper. If you're looking for some, if your if your printer can't take heavier watercolor paper, a 90 pound paper is what you're after. But my son uses this now, and he's probably used most of the pages out of it. So there's that one. I have um, Canson XL watercolor paper. This is a giant pad of it. This is the 
12 by 18 inch paper. I had bought in this size when I was scrapbooking because I was using 12 by 12 paper for scrapbooking so I could cut this down to fit. This is a great watercolor paper. Um, it's smoother than most cold press papers but it works wonderfully. Um, you're just using it for cards and things and you're not super fussy and you just want something to play around and learn on. This is fantastic paper for that. We have this here. This is that B paper. So it's beat from the B Paper Company. It's watercolor paper. It's 100% cotton. It's a cold press paper. I find it fairly smooth. Um, it's made in Malaysia. I had bought in a pack of this at um, Michael's and it did funny things when I got it wet and tried to do wet and to wet washes and stuff and it just didn't react um, the way my expensive watercolor paper reacts or my really cheap stuff. So I'd sent them an email and they sent me another pad and it did the same thing. So I need to play with it some more, but I do believe I just don't personally like it. Some people love bee paper. So it's it's fairly inexpensive and you can pick it up locally at Michael's. So, And they say it's 100% cotton. This is 6 by 9 inch. It's 140 pound. You get 25 sheets in a pack. So that's not bad. <coughs> um, this is Arches cold press paper. I use this all the time. This is 140 pound paper. Um, it comes in a pad. You can buy it in blocks or individual sheets. I keep all of my little pieces if I want to stamp and cut things out. I don't throw them away. Um, it has a great texture to it. It's probably going to be really rough. There you go. You can kind of see it. It's a little bit rougher than a super smooth paper, but it's not super rough. I really like it. I think it's fantastic. I always keep it on hand. Um, I use it all the time. Arches makes fabulous paper. Um, just make sure when you're using things like this where they're loose that you're taping them down to a board so that they don't warp too much on you and then they dry nice and flat when you're finished with them. I also have two that I buy regularly in large sheet form. I just have scraps of it here. Um, this is a super smooth paper. This is Fabriano. I brought it through the printer and it, I needed to clean the printer. So, but This is Fabriano Artistico 140 pound hot press watercolor paper. Super smooth paper. Um, paints beautifully. It's 100% cotton. Um, they do have an extra white version too, which I have upstairs. I didn't have a scrap of it, so I didn't bring it down. It's the same paper. It's just white instead of having that creamy texture, creamy color that most watercolor paper has. So this is a beautiful paper. I use it for watercolors. I use it for colored pencils. It's amazing for colored pencils. It's my favorite colored pencil paper when you want white. So I love that. I keep tons of it on hand. And this is cold press watercolor paper. It's Arches. Um, it is a lot more textured than the other, but this is 300 pound paper. So this is like cardboard. And I buy this for doing um, not so much card making, but um, like I'll use this for cards because it's a scrap, but I do use it for my more formal watercolor paintings. So that is it for paper, you guys. We're getting to the end. I hope you're not too sick of me yet. We're going to talk brushes. I love brushes. Um, here it is. I need to get a larger one. This is my brush roll. It is actually for makeup brushes, but I loved the pattern on it. It's just that it's too short for some of my brushes. I keep other things in here. Colored pencil. This is a uh, um, elegant writer. These things are beautiful when you add water to them. They splurge into blues and pinks and stuff. I, I really like it. Um, this is a water brush. So I use those once in a while. This one's a... This is the one that came in my secure... Uh, Koi watercolor brush, watercolor set. So you take it off and you put the plunger in there and then it fits in your um, travel box if you want to take it with you that way. So I have that one. I also have one of the Tim Holtz ones. I do have a couple. Uh, they're not in here. I don't know where they are right now. But I do have a couple of other just water brushes similar to this. The rest of the set of these and a few other ones. So water brushes are fabulous. I really enjoy them. They have their place. I have some um, black pens, a pencil that I keep in here, a piercing tool, which should be down here to use. Then I have, this one is a Robert Simmons. Um, this is an angled watercolor brush. I don't use it a lot, but I really enjoy having it when I want it. Um, these two are Princeton and Neptune brushes, a 12 and an 8. These are faux squirrels, so they are 100% synthetic. synthetic. Um, but they are super soft and they are supposed to mimic a squir squirrel brush. I have... These are Cotman brushes. Oh, this one's just a Daler and Rowney one. I use it to scrub things out. This is a Cotman brush in a size 0. I have a size 1 somewhere. It's probably upstairs. 
would be my guess, because it's not right handy here. But So I have a size 1 as well. Um, this is a Cotman brush too. It is a number 5. This one came in that little pocket. This one, that little Winsor Newton Cotman thing. It's a good little brush. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. What else do I have here? Sorry, I just kind of want to pull them out as I'm going. Um, these ones are Princeton Art. So these are, are synthetic. They aren't made to mimic like the squirrels like these. They're less expensive than these ones are. I have a number 8 and a number 6. They come to a great point when wet. Beautiful brushes. I try not to keep any brushes I really don't like in here. Um, these two I keep in here. I'm not sure why. But they're Royal Brushes from Royal and Langnickel. They've got the little grippies on them. This one's a flat brush and this one's just a, a really tiny point on it. Um, I don't use them for watercolor. I don't remember what I use them for. But they're in there. So I must have thought they were pretty. These are my silver black vel velvet brushes. This collection is slowly growing. Um, these are my favorite brushes. I have a size 2. This is a size 4. I've used it so much that um, the writing is written off of it. Then I have, this is a 8. So I have a 2, a 4, this one's an 8, this one's a 10, and this one is a small mop brush. So I would like to get a 6 and a 12. And I need to replace my 4 eventually, or re-glue my ferrule. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that it moves. It's coming loose just from being used so much. These are amazing brushes. These are expensive brushes. Um, these are synthetic and squirrel hair mixed, so they are not 100% um, synthetic brushes. I love them. I will use them forever. Like even this one, I'm probably just going to, if the ferrule ever completely falls off, I'll glue it back on. But I love these brushes. and It's a slow building collection, but they are heaven. And then I have this big one which is, I love this brush. It's a quill brush, um, so you can tell that because the ferrule is made of a plastic and it's wrapped around and it looks kind of like it's quilled. Um, these is a Princeton and Neptune. This is a number six quill brush, so it is huge. So a six round and a six quill are different. Um, this is an eight, so you can see the difference between like an eight round and a six quill. Super soft. Again, this is faux squirrel. It's from the same line as these brushes. I really love them. If you're looking for an alternative to these at a slightly less expensive rate with no animal hair in them, this would be the brushes I would recommend, would be these Princeton and Neptune ones. So that is my brush collection. So there we go. That is all of my watercolor stuff to share with you guys for now. Um, like I said, I am hoping that we will, that, um, well, I'm going to do watercolor stuff every Wednesday so next Wednesday I hope that you will come back and pop in and we can do um, some painting and stuff together. Part of the reason why I did this video is simply because people have asked what I have for watercolors and what I would recommend. Um, all of those paints are great. I have there's nothing against any of them. They all have slightly better, slightly worse quality based upon being artist grade, student grade, all of that kind of jazz. And over the coming weeks as we go through them all We'll get a little bit more in-depth with them and use them a little bit more and find a little bit out about them and see what it is you guys will find that you guys will enjoy with them. So thanks for stopping by and I will see you guys next Wednesday or on another video this week. Bye for now.